a teen girl disappears wearing nothing but her PJs. Where is Heidi? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories. Joining me right now is a special guest. I managed to track down Heidi's mother, who is completely distraught. The search ongoing for her teen girl, Heidi. Sydney, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Sydney, first of all, tell me when you first realized Heidi is missing. I saw Heidi at about 12, 15 midnight uh, running on, on the 7th. January 7, 12, 15 a.m. So at 12, 15 a.m., you were having a verbal argument with your daughter because she had been smoking pot. Is that correct? It was a lot of different behaviors that were coming from her. But no, we weren't having an argument. We were having a conversation. Okay. When the conversation was over, okay. it, it was like, she said, Mom, you know what? I'm really tired. I want to go to bed. And I was like, yeah, it's really late. It's about 11.45 at this time. And I'm like, yeah, it's late. I'm tired, too. We can talk about it tomorrow. And she said, okay, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I love you. Good night. I love you. Good night. It wasn't an explosive argument. It was a parent-child conversation mm -hmm. about life. Okay. So you, at that point, think, well, okay, I brought it up to her. We'll talk about it tomorrow. What's the next thing that happened? The next thing that happened is I was sitting outside on my back patio probably about, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes after she went to her room and what I thought, I thought she was laying down and it's adjacent to her bedroom window and I can hear her yelling at someone. I had just taken her phone. Like I was like, you're in trouble. You're making bad choices. I'm taking your phone, which she wasn't happy about. But I mean, and she's yelling. She's yelling so loud and she doesn't sound like herself. And I'm like, who is she talking to? I have her phone. And then I thought, oh, she still has her MacBook. So she's yelling at somebody. And I'm trying to listen, but I can't really understand what she's saying. I made out a few cuss words. Um, and the next thing I know, my front door slams. And I realize that she has her car keys. And so I beeline it outside, and, and when I get outside and I'm at the car door, I'm looking at her, and I know that she's not home. What happened then? Um, there's a pause, and I'm just looking at her, and I'm trying to process what, what's going on, what, what she's thinking. And then she, She's trying to lock the door, but it's like obvious that she doesn't have control of her faculties and she's rolling down the windows. And I'm, I open the door and I'm like, it is after midnight. Like you can't go anywhere, Heidi. You're, you're not going anywhere. And I go to pull the keys out of the car and she puts the car in reverse and hits the gas as hard as she can. She drags me with the car. She's not saying much. She's hitting me or, or trying to hit me and trying to go back and forth and, and the, trying to get me off of the car so that she can make off with the car. And what happened? Um, I was able to get the keys out of the car. And I just held on to the keys for dear life. I'm I'm hurt. Uh, and she's striking me over and over again. At one point, I'm laying on the concrete with my right hand holding the set of keys and my left hand over it, just holding them so tight. She's striking me and trying to get the car keys. And... 
when I get my footing, I'm, I'm able to stand up. And when I stand up, she takes off running. And that was the last time I saw my daughter. She didn't have any shoes on. She had black fuzzy pajama pants on and a gray sweatshirt. Guys, you are hearing the mother of teen girl Heidi Kane. You're hearing Sydney Fife, her mother, who is on a desperate search to bring her daughter home. And all of you mothers out there know that even if your child misbehaves, you don't stop loving them. They're Still, your number one priority, the love of your life, especially teens, act out. But this is far beyond acting out. Heidi has now been missing since January 7th in Fayette County, Georgia, Fayetteville, the county seat. This is about an hour and a half south of Atlanta. If this child has made it to inner city Atlanta, what has become of her? Where is 16-year-old Heidi Kane? Sydney, since January the 7th, have you gotten a phone call or a text from your daughter? even from someone else's phone? No. Nothing? Nothing. Is it true that police have told you she's most likely, quote, a runaway? Yes. Yeah. Miss Fife, I, I, I just can't count the number of times that children and teens have been classified as a runaway. And they weren't runaways at all. And I want to remind everyone listening that most states have what we call a law against harboring runaways. Those are children that run away from home. And there's no question you hear Sydney describing her daughter having some type of a mental episode after her phone is taken away. She knows she's in trouble. She tries to leave in the car. Mom manages at great risk to herself, to her own safety, to stop her from leaving in the car, and she takes off running in the dark of the night. No shoes. And now she's missing. Again, anyone harboring a runaway will be prosecuted. You will go to jail for putting the mother through what she's going through. It is a crime for adults to encourage minors to run away, to hide minors from their parent or their guardian. You cannot encourage a child to run away or stay away from home. That is a crime. If this girl does not have control of her faculties, this could be a kidnap where you keep a person away from where they want to be. It's all it takes. It doesn't require a gun or a knife or binding them with cord. Simply keeping them away will count as a kidnap. Do you believe, Sydney, that somehow someone is harboring her? I do. And have you conveyed that to police? Oh, over and over and over again. And the police keep telling me of, of red tape, not enough probable cause. 
this and that, and I have been working tirelessly to get the police what they need. I've been rattling all the cages, and it should not be like that in the case of a missing child. Hattie's a straight-A student on track to do whatever she wants with her life. Heidi logged into school, and I'm hoping this is the key that unlocks it, Nancy. Heidi logged into school on the 8th and the 9th. Heidi is homeschooled through a program called Georgia Connections Academy. And when I realized that, I sent it straight to the detective. This red tape shouldn't be a thing, Nancy, and I'm telling you, it'll take me three to maybe seven years, but I'm going to change laws surrounding this. I'm going to rally for it. No red tape with a missing child. None. When it comes to a baby, when it comes to somebody's children, especially a child that's in danger, there should not be this tape. It's wrong. It's so wrong. I want to know, Sydney, what you're going through. Every night when you try to put your head on the pillow, what goes through your mind? Where is my baby? Is she hurt? Is she hungry? Is somebody exploiting her? Is she alive? Miss Fife, I have a daughter and a son Heidi's age. And I, I watch them like hawks as best as I can because I'm so afraid that something could happen to them. I'm just so sorry what you're going through. I can't imagine trying to fall asleep at night without John, David, or Lucy safe at home. Whoever may have Heidi Kane, I will do everything in my power to see you behind bars. If you have information on this teen girl, she's just 16, a beautiful girl, 5'1", around 120, 25 pounds, just gorgeous. Please dial 770-719-4284. Repeat, 770-719-4284. Please help us find Heidi and bring her home to her mother. Goodbye, friend. <laughs>